I've been doing this session for like two and a half years at many events in the UK and various events by Skype. And this is by far the most amount of people that have ever come to see my tasty back end. Um, except, for <laughs> except for Tuesday night in the red light district, but I'm not going to get into that here. So um, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Jenny Tian, and this is the Building a Tasty Backend session. Um, if anybody can't hear me, I'll be surprised because I'm quite loud. I make a lot of bad jokes, and roll with it. If anybody has any questions throughout, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. Um, uh, if anything I'm talking about, or otherwise we'll just do questions at the end. So a bit about me. Once again, there is my name. Um, I'm a freelancer, but I work under the name of Delicious Creative because I guess it makes me sound like a bigger company. And people can call up to me and say, hey, can I speak to somebody in marketing? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Um, and I tell them to leave me alone. Um, I'm originally from the US, but I moved to the UK in 2006 for a job that I lost six years ago. Um, that was in Liverpool. And then two years ago, I moved to Brighton which has a pretty amazing Drupal scene, pretty amazing kind of web and tech scene in general. Um, great place to be a freelancer as well. Lots of freelancers there. And I've been using Drupal since about 2006, 2007. Um, at my old job, we were, I was dealing with some massive kind of static HTML sites and was looking into various CMSs here and there um, and just kind of settled upon Drupal because I, I figured out that using Drupal, I could kind of configure ways for my boss to not be able to royally screw up all of the websites I was making for the company. Dreamweaver's evil in those regards. So thankfully, that's all dead, and now we have Drupal. And back then, it was Drupal 5, and thank God now we have Drupal 7 and 8 beta 1 out now, which is pretty sweet. Um, and this is the last thing. I once met Ghostface Killer. if we got any Wu-Tang fans in the house. I don't know why I like to share that one, but... It was, it was really random. I went to go see him and just ended up meeting him afterwards. <laughs> they invited me and my friends back to their hotel room, but we didn't go. Um, there is a demo site if you want to play along at home uh, at tastybackend.com. I, I swear it's a safe website to visit. And if you Google Tasty Backend, I swear that's safe as well. Last I checked. And I'm actually, oop, let me turn Twitter off. I'm actually uh, quite happy that... Uh, when you Google Tasty Backend, it's all my name that shows up. So I'm proud of that. My mom, maybe not, but I am. So don't listen to me. Or, OK, listen to me. But this isn't gospel. This isn't you should do this exactly. This is kind of a collection of things that I've done over the past six or seven years um, to kind of help my clients understand Drupal better, use Drupal better. Drupal has a reputation of being hard to use. BS. It's not hard to use. It's up to you to make it easy to use. So by all means, pay attention to what I'm doing, and please do listen. But um, take it with a grain of salt. Take what I'm saying and uh, adapt it to your own projects. A lot of this is going to be Drupal 7 demo stuff. Um, we'll talk a bit about 8 along the way. But a lot of the same concepts are going to apply to Drupal 8. Maybe we'll just use slightly different modules or techniques to get there. But um, in the end, customize it. Make your own tasty backend for your own clients. So what is this all about? What is the tasty back end? Drupal is incredibly powerful. I guess that's probably why we're all here. We all love it. But we're not normal. What is it, Wednesday? We're all sitting in a room talking about Drupal instead of being at work. Quite often I do these talks on the weekends, and people show up to, to learn about it then. We're freaks. We're, we, we love this stuff. We're the geeks. We understand it. So for us, you know, we can say, oh, these content types and taxonomy and everything else. We understand it, but our clients probably don't. It's not their job to make websites. It's their job to update their websites, to use their websites. We're the ones that have to make it easy for these people. Because power, duh, is powerful. So let's, make, let's streamline that a bit to give our clients the power they need without wrecking shop, without, while making it easy for them to be able to do what they do. Because all this power can be very overwhelming. Um, I've had a lot of clients over the years that have been small businesses, um, maybe doing some e-commerce stuff, maybe just looking for brochureware websites. Um, quite often, I'd show them something I thought was quite easy, and they just <gasps> recoil in fear. And we don't want that. We don't need that. So Drupal provides a good start for us, and we have kind of basic content forms and basic management screens. Um, but it's only a good start. The defaults are just kind of okay. For me, anyway. 
because Drupal isn't a CMS. This is very, very important. No matter when everybody tells you the Drupal CMS, it's not a CMS. It is a toolkit for building a CMS. I got into an argument with a pub, in a pub with a guy a few months ago, and he was saying, oh, I won't use Drupal. I build a custom CMS for all of my clients. And I said, so do I. I just happen to use a common set of tools that thousands of people across the world work on instead of you and your partner. Your system's insecure. And the bottom line is, if you're only providing user one access, you've failed. Sorry to be blunt about it, but I'm a freelancer. I work on a lot of other people's websites that come to me for help saying, we don't know how to use this, we don't know what's going on. I log in and either every, every user account that's been created, if people have actually created other user accounts, all have full admin rights, or everybody's sharing user one login. <gasps> Death. If you don't want people to use your sites properly and you want to feel a lot of support requests because your views have gone missing or something, by all means, give your clients user one access. Otherwise, customize it for them. So we must help all of these people that we're making the websites for because our content admins are human. We're the weirdos, we're the freaks, we're the robots, we're the code monkeys or whatever else. The people managing our sites are human. So we need to simplify how they add their content how they manage their content, and how they get around. These are kind of the three basic things that goes into every kind of tasty back-end site that I do. And we don't have to create the, recreate the wheel to do this. It's really easy. I'm not being funny. It really is. I've got a bit of a sore throat, so I apologize if I take a lot of drink breaks. So... What's the, first thing, what's the first thing that people often say to you when they want a new website? We want a website to create content. We want to add blog posts. We want to add case studies. We want to add products or images or whatever else. They're going to update the blog once a year. There's nothing we can do about that. We're all guilty of that. I'm quite guilty of it. Um, but that's the basic crux of what they want to do. This is everything for new clients, especially people new to Drupal. And the basic forms are okay. Got an example here. This is a basic page. I've added a different taxonomy term to this, but you know, this is how it looks by default. It's all right, I guess. This is a pretty simple content type, so in the end, not a whole lot going on, but it works. And the vertical tabs at the bottom helps kind of clean things up. Who remembers a lot of expanding and collapsing field sets from Drupal 6 and Drupal 5? Yeah. My clients hated those. I hated them as well. For some reason, it's just kind of all the moving around and the the, the, the links weren't obvious that they opened up something else, and sometimes getting new users just to click something is quite hard. So I was quite happy when vertical tabs were around because I thought these were great. The way that they work I thought was just absolutely brilliant. And moderation isn't my style. I like to do things big. I like big hair. I like big drinks. Um, I like coming to big events. So I was like, screw it. Let's just vertical tab everything. Yeah, Everything. I even put my mom in vertical tabs. That's the biggest laugh I've ever gotten about that, and that wasn't a good laugh. <laughs> and if you notice, mom is required as well. Um, so uh, vertical tab everything. Um, Drupal 7, there's a great module called the field group. Um, allows you to group fields um, either in forms or on the front end for presentation for display. And um, it's quite easy. You just do it through the UI. Add a new group, put your fields in it, boom, you got it. Um, and as of yesterday, I think, there is a Drupal 8 release, um, which I'm very happy about moving forward because I rely on it heavily not only for forms and things, but it's just quite easy to wrap things up in a, in, in a group. Um, it shortens the forms and simplifies things so your clients, once again, don't recoil in fear. So here we had this basic page like this. Let's just take a look at it all in vertical tabs. So... Already, for me, it's a lot simpler because everything that people need to see as soon as they want to add any of this content type is right in front of them. And everything else is kind of hidden off to the side. So it gets your forms to the point of the content. Everything else down here um, on these is, for the most part, unnecessary. And everything here on the right, for the most part, in Drupal 8, is unnecessary. The bottom line is, giving your clients access or putting something right in their face as soon as they want to add that content means they don't have to worry about anything else. So putting all of your important fields right up front greatly helps them just see exactly what it is they need to do 
They don't have to worry about anything else. Add a title, add a body, hit save, you're done. End up. If you need any other options, we have these menu settings, URL path, comments, etc. I'll come back to comments because this is a basic page content type and chances are comments shouldn't be there. Are comments useful on basic pages for anyone? Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. So if I want to, uh, and the way Drupal just, if you have comments enabled on your site, will add this vertical tab everywhere. Um, we should get rid of this, quite frankly. Because if, if something is there, chances are someone's going to go looking around and all of a sudden you have an about us page with comments. And yeah, that, that, that doesn't work for me. So once again, we just add the basic fields necessary and um, hide everything else. So this is a quite basic example. But what if we have a quite complex example? Um, let's take a look at this kind of content type here. This is a, a product model on this website. That's the content type. Um, we have text here. We have this tabbed box here. Um, we have a table at the end. We have images. We have a video if they want it. We have reference downloads. Don't mind the broken image. That's not my fault. Um, I don't think I have stage file proxy enabled or something. Um, but this is quite a complex um, content type. And if we look at that, the standard Drupal way, title, we have language on here. This is a multilingual site. They have to add a category. They have this top, top content field. They have a lower cost content, productivity content, safety content, options content. This whole table here, video, listing image, more images, links, downloads. I gotta catch my breath. There's a lot of fields. There's loads of fields here. This is quite overwhelming to new people to have to fill out this giant form. So we can do better. Let's kind of break this out into possibly how it's going to be displayed on the front end. So we have a title, we have our language, everything here. This is the basics. For success in making this content type, you don't need the images, you don't need anything else. We've got defaults that'll kick in if you don't add stuff. Um, but in the end, this is all you need. So when you do want to customize anything else, when you do want items, in this tabbed box down below. You can click the tab box and you can just move through, as you see here, all the way into the table, which is quite easy for people to add as well. No WYSIWYGs, no messing around, dragging tables, netting columns, everybody, that's a guaranteed way to screw up your website. It also means that we can control this very fine-grainedly, move things around, send stuff off to other systems, make a brand new theme and everything just works. Um, all the other benefits of fields that we we'll, won't go into here, that's another session. Um, and you can just work your way down the list if you need them. The key word being if. You probably don't. If you do, great, you have it. So this is much simpler, in my humble opinion. And they've had quite a good success in, in, in using it this way. It also mimics what people see on the front with what they see on the back. So we'll, well, I'm still waiting to see exactly how inline editing and things like that work in Drupal 8. Tried it out a few times, cool concept. Not sure how my clients will deal with it. In the end, people have traditionally liked the way I've done this. So cool, I'm sticking with it. You can also hide very long lists of things. <clears throat> Some sites I work on, we have hundreds of categories, thousands maybe. Maybe there's a lot of entity references or other things. Um, and adding those to a form could be quite huge, actually. So if we go to add this not tasty content type, you'll see an example here. We've got the title and then we just have tons of terms here. And that makes the form long. I, I know I said I like things big and better before, but a big form doesn't work for me. Long forms don't work for me, it's too much. And maybe they don't even need categories, this field is optional. So if we look at that, the tasty version, once again, minimum for creating the content type is right up front, title and body. Categories hides that. You only have to see this massive list if and when you need it. So if we have other lists of references, we can hide those in there as well. Once again, just making the form look more um, shorter and easier to fill out. But in the end, you still have the added complexity if and when you need it. On a side note, I make a lot of dating sites. So if anybody does look at my website at the end, you'll, you'll see that a lot of dating sites on there. And I deal with a lot of join forms. And we've done a lot of testing with various forms um, over the years. And we often settle on a version of a form which either has each field presented to the, in, to the user individually for signups or only half of them. And when we did that, we noticed the conversions go up a lot because people thought the, the form was easier to fill out, only seeing one or two fields at a time. 
So in the end, I've kind of got proof that this maybe works, at least if you want to get people to sign up to a dating site. Um, so yeah, you can add in a lot more fields without making it look huge. And you can also add in additional complexity. Um, everybody here loves carousels, right? <laughs> no. Clients love carousels. Everybody, hates, everybody else hates carousels. But what, what ends up happening? You have a, maybe a carousel node content type or maybe using ECK, you create like a, a custom entity type to handle all that stuff. Um, watch my what the eck talk if you're interested in that. Um, on this one, on this site, we decided to stick a vertical tab in here just in case they wanted to add this blog entry to their front page slideshow. So normal blog entry, they just go to add it, <coughs> title and body, and they can add images, et cetera, down here. But if they wanted to add something to this front page slideshow, this carousel, they don't have to then go create another piece of content and reference this node, which is a very Drupal way of doing things. I sometimes do things like that a lot myself. But here we decided, let's just stick it in here because it doesn't matter. So we have all of these options for adding something to the, to the front page carousel, which means that all the images, everything automatically links back here if and when we need to. They know that if they need to edit something on that particular slide, they just go to the blog post for that and they can edit it right there. And if this was a normal form, um, something along these lines, this would make the form unnecessarily huge. All of these fields are completely unnecessary, unless, you know, especially with a blog. You might have hundreds of blog posts, but you might only want three featured on the home page. So this way, you only have to look at it once again if and when you need it. So you can hide additional complexity without adding, or uh, you can add additional functionality without adding complexity, which will help your users once again in the, in, in the long run. So Drupal 8 content forms, once again, looking like this. Does it, does, do people like this? Are people happy with it for the most part? I know, I know it's kind of WordPress-y in some ways. Um, it's all right. For me, I'm looking for ways to get rid of this already. Um, I think that these items on the right, once again, aren't really used all that often. Like some of the big promotions, I don't quite often use these kinds of things sometimes. So I've been working a little bit, and I have found my Drupal 8 VM is incredibly slow. So I've already gotten rid of it, which is good. I'm still working on getting all of it in vertical tabs, but with the field group now having a D8 release, I'm hoping that I can continue to do this in the future. But once again, if you like those, by all means, leave them. Um, but hopefully we'll have some better ways to customize things, because it, it took me a little while to figure out how to get around that. As it turns out, it was just an after build, adding it in the form alter, fun stuff. So, ah, wrong. As of, as of what I looked at earlier today, Field Group is, has a release, haven't tested it. So hopefully, and obviously this is wrong as well because as of an hour ago, I've overridden that. So next time I'll get my slides updated before I actually do the talk. So further node form cleansing. Um, disable the preview button, it doesn't work. It doesn't give you a preview. It confuses clients, loads. So don't use it. Um, hopefully we'll have, I think there may be some work on that in D8. I'm not really sure, real previews. Um, anyone? Yeah, is it working? Cool, haven't tested it. So sweet, maybe, maybe hopefully in the future I can get rid of this from the D8 um, slides as well. All these reasons now, obviously we're all gonna have seven sites to still work on to maintain, probably still building some over the next couple of years as things in eight get ironed out and contrib catches up. Because um, the clients are expecting something else, especially if you're using an admin theme. They're going to expect to see exactly what people are going to see, and they don't. So instead of offering something that doesn't work properly, just get rid of it. Um, if people do need previews and they're creating new content, I say just don't publish it, and then have a look at it, and then when you're ready, go ahead and publish it. If there's other content that's already in there, um, use revisioning or workflows um, for preview functionality. Uh, the, the revisions in core won't give you that, but the revisioning module will. Um, sets up different workflows for, for your revision so you can actually see a, re a revision before it gets pushed out to be the live one, and that works quite well. And to keep going from there, if it's on the page, and it shouldn't be, get rid of it. People will click stuff, whether it's a breadcrumb or an item in the form. That comments box, for instance, that I showed you earlier, which I will be getting rid of in the future. Um, get rid of it, once again. 
people will go in there. They'll call you. You don't want to get called. You want to get your work done. No support. Get rid of it. And if you want to do some dev, hook form alter is great for all that stuff. Um, but if you don't, you can use rules and rules form support module to handle a lot of that stuff, which will allow you to disable things in the UI and things along those lines. Um, really helps clean things up. And it's not just content we can do this for. Commerce products, anything else, custom entities using ECK. I have an example here of an e-commerce site I'm working on with Drupal Commerce. And this is a kind of combo product type that I have added. And we have the, the previews, the licensing uh, status. I've also done some crazy stuff where if you select a download or a printed product, it changes the quantities and adds in some other quantity options here. But once again, it's not just for content. If you have a form or if your users are entering information anywhere, clean it up. It's not Drupal's job to know what you're building, so clean it up. Managing content is the other big thing. And the default content page isn't really up to the task on any sort of complex site. If we have a look, we all know what this looks like. Yeah, it's basic. It's, it's got some filters here, but it doesn't have very useful information about your content types if you have complex content types. What if you have an image content type? Wouldn't it be nice to actually see a thumbnail of the image on the management screen for that? I think so. So for me, this isn't up to snuff. And there's also way too many clicks. If you only want to see things of a certain content type, you have to in it, you have to use a filter, um, and you don't have specific enough information. So views bulk operations is our best friend here. It's been around for a while, and I'm always surprised at some of the people that don't know about it, um, especially now that it's in core, um, which is fantastic, so now everybody will know about it. But with views bulk operations, you can create custom management screens for all of your content types and customize them for the complex content that you have on your sites. Instead of giving everybody the default, customize it for the actual website you're building. Once again, Drupal doesn't know what you're building, so it can only provide a basic default. So, admin screens that suit the content. If we go over here, um, which one should we look at? We'll go back to this example here. Manage content. We were talking about product models before. Um, so here is a custom view to manage all of the product models. And as you see, we already have the categories, the types, the language, et cetera. And this is all customizable through views. So if you know how to use views, not a problem. And we're already seeing much more relevant information than this could ever provide. And you can customize all the filters as well, if and when you have to. Clients have been finding this quite good. Um, it shows the relevant information on complex content types, as you see the categories and product types here. And it gives the clients access to easy inf or relevant information. And while building sites, it gives me, or you, because that says you, access to relevant information. Being a freelancer or making websites is quite hard to get clients to kind of get that information out of them sometimes. So sometimes discovering the relationship of content, for me anyway, can take a long time to figure out exactly how things should go. But if I have a screen that I can look at and see the relationship, I know the relationship of the content better. That's going to help me build a better website, and it's going to help them manage their website much better as well. So everybody is better all around. And yes, use bulk operations is included in Drupal 8 core, which is sweet. Um, all the default management screens, the, the, the content screen, the, the user management screen, those are all views. So you can easily override them or you can clone them to make a new one. I generally prefer to leave kind of core stuff as it is and make new ones. Obviously, your mileage may vary. But it means that all of this stuff that we're doing here, you can easily do right in core. And since the core comes with these views, you can use those as a starting point for any custom views you might want to make down the line as well. But we don't want homeless views, do we? We don't have any real section to manage all of these. So let's make one. There's a great module called Contextual Administration, which does a lot of things. But one of the things it does do is allow you to create custom admin sections in your site, which will essentially just list menu links. But it will be, it will be consistent with the, say, node add screen.
Um, it allows you to create, basically, pages like this. It also does a lot of other stuff, custom user management, um, taxonomy management, whole, whole, whole much bunch more. But what I usually do is make a manage content section to hold all of these management views, the admin manage content. Um, and then from there, for this as an example, if you go to that page, now we have all of the menu items that are children of this, and we have a nice place to put all of these. Um, so we have a family home now for all of our views bulk operation children, and that's all nice and sweet and great because they have a place to live. So contextual administration um, also creates admin areas for, for items that users might not have access to. Who's ever ticked those taxonomy permissions for edit and deleting the terms? And then thought, well, crap, now how do my clients access this? Yeah, like because you, you might not want to give administer taxonomy permissions. I don't. I probably have admin taxonomies that I don't want my day-to-day -day users managing the content to be able to mess around with. But if you don't give that full permission in Drupal 7, you don't have a management screen. They can't drag and drop the, 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 the terms. Um, to actually edit or delete a term, you have to navigate to the taxonomy slash term slash term ID page and click the edit tab. And that's messy. It's also hard to find. So context admin allows you to create custom admin screens for things like taxonomy terms. And it really makes those permissions make sense, the edit and delete permissions. So for example here, um, actually we'll use this one as a better example. We have a categories menu item here and you'll see we have language, media type, these are all these. Um, we weren't using translation in this site, just so learning language as a category works fine for those things, just in case anybody thinks I'm crazy. Um, but we'll go to say media type here. And this looks very much like the normal taxonomy management pages, but it's not. If we look at the URL, we'll see that it's actually, oops, it's actually admin manage categories media underscore type. So this now, we, this user role wouldn't have a screen like this without context admin. So the context admin module is great for doing stuff like that. Menus, the, remember the third thing, how people get around. Toolbar? Nah. As being the one putting together the sites, I love admin menu. I like the toolbar style as well, it looks nice. Um, so for me, the default toolbar just isn't up to it. And that also uses the, what is it, the management menu by default. Whereas for me, the way that Drupal starts to put the add content links into the navigation menu, that makes a lot more sense to me. Because the, the primary thing that my users are doing is adding content, managing content. So if Drupal's already gonna start putting things in that menu, I'm just gonna use that navigation menu for their basic admin menu. It also means that they won't accidentally see links that aren't appropriate for them. They also won't accidentally click on things that might get them an access denied. So I always customize that in the navigation menu. And it also, but the, the problem with navigation menu is by default, where does Drupal puts that in a block? Like say you have bar tick, you know, when you first you know, fire up a standard install or something, it puts the navigation menu in a block in the first sidebar. Now, that's not really great because what if you don't have sidebars? You know, what if you have a left sidebar at one point, then you get into an interior page and it's in the right sidebar? Now your admins are confused about where their menu is and to where they have to look to add stuff. So get, the, get anything administrative out of your front-facing theme. By all means, just get rid of it. Now, toolbar does that, seven. Toolbar does that in eight. Admin menu does that um, in seven, and it's, I've tested it in eight, haven't been able to get it work properly. But always use some sort of an administration menu. Don't rely on blocks and putting things in regions in your front-facing theme. And I use admin menu source for that now. Admin menu source module allows you to select a menu, say the navigation menu, and have that menu rendered in the admin menu module, um, so it'll have this style, um, and you can customize it per role. So this user role that I'm logged in on, on this site here, you'll see this looks kind of like the user one menu, because it's using the admin menu module, but this is actually the navigation menu. This user role that I'm logged in with here, this is all completely customized for them depending on the site that they need to use. This is a commerce site, so we have products and managing and orders, we have categories, files. Everything is customized for the people that need to do this. There's three different user roles on this site. There's a content admin, 
who basically gets ad content, manage content and categories. There's a store admin. All they can access is the product, um, manage products, add products, and orders. And there's a user admin who gets access to the users. Out of the, out of the front facing theme, quite easy to navigate. One click to get anywhere you need. It's great. Um, yeah, I guess I've gone through all these already. And it's customizable for roles. So if, if you do have multiple roles that you need to say you have different complete menus for them, you can do so. Um, for my three user roles on this site, I just use a navigation menu for all three. If they don't have access to the menu items, they just won't show up, which is great. Drupal does that for you. But if you need to, if you have a specialized role and you want to give them an admin menu, you can create a completely separate menu and say this role, use this menu, end of. Drupal 8 admin menus. Toolbar is cool. I like it. Um, especially on mobiles. Moving forward, I'd like it to be customizable. I would love to be able to plug my own menus into it, but it's also too many clicks. So I'm maybe, I'm maybe thinking to continue with the admin menu for users on desktops and maybe using toolbar for users on tablets and mobiles because that's a much better experience because admin menu on a mobile is horrific because um, it's using hovers and stuff like that. So it's not going to be great. So we got a good starting point in eight. Let's try to refine that and make it better moving forward. Um, users. Sometimes content admins need to be user admins as well. You know, we, we, I don't want somebody to call me up and say, I need to add a new user to the site. But I also don't want to give everybody that has access to the site the ability to manage users. That's a massive security risk. Outside of that, I don't want my clients to know there's a user one at all. I don't want them to see it. So if any of them are watching, it's, it's not there, I swear. But shh, it is. So if we make some custom screens for that, we can use, use bulk operations and context admin to do the same thing. So if I go back here and I go to manage users, this is not the default page. Oh, emails. I should get that off there. I didn't think of that. Um, but on that page, the user one doesn't exist. The user one is not there. They can't click it and see it and go, ooh, what, what's this user? Something that has admin in the name or something. You know, they can't see it, so they're not going to start messing with my account. Um, role delegation module also greatly helps because it allows you to, oops, it allows you to say this user role, the user admin, can only assign these other user roles. Um, if you're using, say, a standard Drupal install or you're using a, which comes with an administrator role, which automatically um, assigns all administrative permissions to that role. Um, I don't want people to be able to assign that. Chances are the people managing the users on my sites day to day, they're not gonna understand all that stuff. So they shouldn't be assigning people as administrators. So they can assign other people as content administrators or maybe store administrators or even other user admins, but they don't have the ability to, decide, to assign all of the roles. So a lot of this is really kind of taking Drupal's everything approach and narrowing it down to only what you need to do. And as a bonus, control access to user settings is a nice module as well because it allows you to say these peop this user role can manage users but not how users can register or the text that goes out along with that um, for in emails, that is. So moving forward, there is an install profile, um, the Tasty Backend install profile. It's still only on GitHub. I started on there a while ago. I was really hoping that by the time this rolled around, I'd have gotten my button gear and had a proper release on Drupal.org, but it hasn't happened yet, so it's still there, and also I don't have any full projects, so I need to get approval. If anybody wants to help me with that, I would be very much appreciated. So if you want all of this stuff that the Tasty Backend I've been showing you, the Tasty Backend install profile will do all of it for you. So every time you add a content type, it will add a management screen for that content type. Every time you add a new vocabulary and you assign um, the edit and delete permissions to users, to your, say your, your custom user role, it will automatically create those management screens for you. It will add menu items for administrating menu items. That's one thing I forgot to mention, actually. Um, you also notice here, Drupal by default has administer menus or basically nothing. I don't want my users to mess around with the management menu or the navigation menu. I want them to use the footer menu, the header menu, the main menu. Um, menu admin per role is the module for that. I highly recommend it. Basically says content admins can manage these menus and that's it. So as a side note. 
So please, anybody, um, check that out, test it out. Um, it is an install profile, but there is a base module, a media module, a web form standard. There are pluggable modules or modules outside of it that you can add to an existing site. So if you have an existing site that you want to add this type of stuff to, you can add those to an existing site. I really need help with testing that. Um, so if anybody can, can contribute, that would be great. Um, so you can kind of add uh, Tasty Backend to existing sites. On top of that, you've seen that there's a Tasty Backend media module, web form, and commerce is coming soon. So if you have any of these other contrib modules on your site, you can have Tasty Backend views and other things that happen to manage those certain things. So there's even, I'm trying to put as many add-ons into it as well, depending on the sites that I'm working on. I don't always use media, pretty much always web form, although entity form seems to be all the rage at the moment. Obviously, I'm not building every single site as a commerce site, but when I do, I want to be able to add all this stuff to it, and these modules will give you all those tools to do so. So now, release of eight beta one today. So the future is definitely eight, but we've got work to do. A lot of the stuff that I rely on, a lot of stuff that I think should be in core, that's a part of the Tasty backend, isn't yet. I'm gonna try over the next three months to try to help out with, with a lot of that stuff, so hopefully I'll have some better Tasty backend stuff in the future for D8, watch this space. But um, all of these modules as of today or, or recently weren't working that great for me or have releases at all. Um, admin menu source does not, I believe. Admin menu does. Field group now does, um, but the rest of these, from what I know, um, do not. And modules such as role delegation to allow users to add other user roles, um, override node options, and view unpublished, for me, are modules that I put in every project and quite frankly, I think should be maybe in core, I don't know, but um, they're quite useful. Override node options for anybody allows you to say these people, this user role can only make things published or unpublished, so it'll hide all the rest of the promoted, sticky, et cetera. Um, view unpublished allows certain user roles to view all unpublished content of a certain type. So things like that make a lot more sense to me. Hopefully, we'll get there in the end. Any questions? Uh, there's a microphone there for anybody. Um, that would be great. Um, I haven't seen uh, uh, the, the part of people Managing their menus. Uh, have you have tips or tricks? Because it's quite confusing. Uh, sometimes uh, you put it on uh, on the note form yeah. um, to edit it and uh, to add it to a menu. Then you have to choose uh, one of the menus that are available for it. Find the right spot. Yeah. And sometimes you want it on two places in menus, then we have to go to the menu management. Yeah, I mean, the only, the only thing I can really see about menus is just kind of um, using the, what was it, the uh, menu admin per menu module to make sure to lock that down, the only ones they can edit. And then outside of that, making sure that you have a good, you're adding the menu items to this, this one here, so they can have easy access to it. I don't, you know, things end up in multiple menus on a lot of sites I do. And yeah, you just kind of have to go in and, and add them. I don't, there, there might be other stuff in Contrib out there that allows you to do it while you're creating the node. I'm not, I'm not aware of any. So um, the, the, the best I've found from menus is just using that. And you know, as you'll see, it just gives you access to these screens, um, which is great. So, and it also means that you know, even the, even the um, listing page that lists all the menus, all the rest of the menus aren't there, so they won't even know they exist. Anyone else? Hello. Um, do you have um, tips or tricks to, for example, visualizing the uh, links between content and something more advanced? Because this is for like the really basic users. Mm. Uh, our problem usually is that we create kind of uh, complex content types, and we have admins who are capable of handling these things. Mm -hmm. But the UX kind of sucks. Is, are you talking about like a lot of like maybe references? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things. Um, what I did, what I tend to do mostly, um, we go back to this one as an example for these product models. Um, these product categories and product types are actually references here. So I just like to show as much stuff on the admin screens 
as humanly possible so that way they can know. Um, these filters are probably should have made drop downs. That would have made a lot more sense. But then that way you can say, you know, anything that references counterbalance, you can filter down to all of that stuff. Um, I don't know. We could, uh, probably come up with some ways to visualize things better, the kind of relationships. Um, I think I saw a dev module out there that used a graphing solution for those kind of things, and it kind of hooked into entity reference so you could visualize maybe the relationship between data. Not something I've personally looked into, but I do believe there's something out there now um, doing that. I think I saw that going yeah. around the Twitters at some point. Yeah, I'd be really interested in that. Uh, the other question would be about kind of VCWIG versus like really well-structured <laughs> yeah. content types because usually, well, there is to extent to you can define like really well-grained, like you have this box, you have three tabs, mm. you, so you define like all the stuff there, mm. or, or you can create like fields for these. Yeah. But when people need like kind of flexibility and when you're not sure what they are going to do, yeah, there's this kind of gap. Yeah, there's, that's, a, that's a massive debate. I, was, I, I did a boff at um, in Prague last year about that, um, talk about some different solutions. A lot of it um, uh, in the media for eight um, yesterday, they were showing off some great things um, using references um, for images and things along those lines, which is definitely a lot better than people just putting HTML markup into a text area, because um, that's just a recipe for disaster in, in, in the long run, especially when it comes to responsive sites, or if you're pushing content out to other systems, or mobiles, or apps, or anything along those lines. A fieldable approach, for me, is always better, but then you do lose that flexibility. So I, I, what I, I, if you notice, you haven't seen a WYSIWYG on any of the examples I've shown. Um, I don't tell clients about them, and then if they ask for them, I kind of take that approach anyway, give them the least amount and then make them ask for more. Um, if they need something like that, some sort of a flexible content type, maybe we'll do that with a basic page or have some sort of flexi, not, not flexi node as in back in that, that module, but something along those lines so they can have it. But I tend to try to steer people more toward a templated approach. And if they do need options, I'll put options on the nodes. And then you can also use things like display suite and panels and panelizer, et cetera, to give people more kind of layout options. But for basic stuff, I'll most likely just give people options saying, or maybe build in two or three layouts um, and put a field on there that then selects the layouts. Or I think display suite does some stuff like that as well. So I, I tend to go that way. Um, and the, the big argument I use quite often is responsive. Um, because it's quite easier just to make sure you control you, you control all the markup completely in that in those regards. Um, uh, for instance, I had a client recently where we just added a new theme, and they were quite concerned about how things are going to go outside of that. And I said, "Well, listen, everything has been controlled since day one on here. When the new theme is ready, I'm just going to enable it, and it's all going to work." And it did, and they were like, "Oh yeah, great." Whereas if stuff was in, you know, loads of markup in a text area, that would have been an absolute nightmare especially given the, there's this, this website had a few thousand kind of landing pages and things. So that would have been an absolute nightmare to kind of go through all those. Um, so I, I'm in the camp of fields and templates, and WYSIWYG must die. <laughs> Although having CK Editor in Core, I am quite happy about, because it means we finally get good results for when I do have to do that stuff. And normally, if I do put a WYSIWYG into a site, I'll put basics, bolds, headings, things like that. Um, maybe an image, but I try to steer people away from that because obviously you know, I, I like using BU Editor and things like that, and the people managing the, kind of the content on a lot of these sites are okay with that, um, just putting HTML in there, but I'm perfectly okay with the WYSIWYG for headings and bold text and basic text formatting and things like that. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so, so you're asking if I do the user tests. Um, basically, <laughs> as a freelancer, I don't have projects with large budgets. Um, so I don't, I don't normally have a phase of that, but what I con I'm constantly badgering clients to say, make sure as I'm rolling out new features, it's your responsibility to start using them. 
Um, let's go through that. There's a lot of screen shares on Skype and things along those lines. Um, so, and quite frankly, a lot of the things that I've come up with over the years for this, um, I've learned from clients having the same problems kind of over and over again. And after I started doing things these ways, I stopped getting support emails and calls. So for a lot of people, especially if I'm working with a lot of the same agencies over and over again, I'll add something new to the sites. I'll say it's now in your admin menu. Check it out. I also hope that my approach in templating things is fill out the form, hit save, and you're done. You can't screw it up. With a WYSIWYG, you know, somebody once described WYSIWYG to me as WYSIWYB, which is what you see is what you break. So with this approach, it's pretty much unbreakable, and I often say, try and break it. Go for it. Try and break it. Hasn't happened yet. So um, we've got somebody waiting at the mic. So. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question about menus. Yes. We have a lot of uh, customers having large menus. Sometimes, uh, yeah. Um, do you have uh, any solutions for that? Uh, we tend to use Workbench Access for... Um, Creating a smaller amount of menu options. Okay. Did, I don't know if you know that module. Or I, have I, any... I, have, I have used it. Um, some of the kind of workbench stuff I don't like to shoehorn my stuff into. I've, I'm, I, I'm the kind of person that likes, okay, there's something out there that does it, but I'll build it with flag and rules for some reason. Um, but by all means, if it, if, if it works for you, that's great. Um, I was looking for a, a, a different solution maybe you had seen. I haven't. I, I, if <laughs> there's probably something out there. I haven't looked at it in a while, especially like this site here. There's m multiple languages and multiple menus per language, and there's a lot of menu items. So in the end, I don't have a perfect solution for that. I, anything here is just kind of going into, you know, um, just the way that just core menu stuff. So, yeah, we have a lot of menu items. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I basically have two questions. The first one is um, you didn't mention anything about the contextual links module in the Drupal core. Are you against it? or? Uh? Every time I turn it on, it screws up something royally in my front-facing theme, and I end up having to work around it, and it drives me nuts, so I just turn it off. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, I, I keep wanting to use it, and then I keep going, oh, man. Um, so if, if people need more stuff like that, then it's, it, say, in a view for, if, if, if you're viewing a node, I don't even think you get contextual links. Um, but something like, like a content type, it's quite easy to just, if you have a view, to put view, uh, edit and delete links in a view if, if, if you need to. And since that will all, you know, views is checking permissions, they won't appear for anonymous users and things. Um, items like menus and other places where contextual links show up. Um, I think the approach with always having this menu there and having clear he you know, top level menu items and making, you know, using admin menu, which means you only have one click to get anywhere you need. I've found people have had good results with that, so they know that even if they're looking at the front facing theme and they see, I want to edit this. Um, so if we're going to look at this site, and they say, oh, okay, well, we have this menu here. I want to edit that. They know that they can go to, um, you know, header menu. Uh-oh. That's not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, bad example. Firefox is crashing. Ah, oh, embarrassing. Anyway. So, that's, that's uh, yeah, okay. I... I, I keep wanting to, but then for some reason, like, for instance, actually on, on that site, there's mega menus that drop down, and um, con Views was, I think, putting in a contextual links wrapper around it that was preventing the mega menus from dropping down because it was all display none. So I, I have problems like that with it, so I just end up not using it. Okay, and the second question is, it's more about uh, the case study when you are using panels on the website because this example is basically using only the default Drupal stuff with a little bit with some yeah, kind I, I of relevance. I don't, I don't use but panels. When <laughs> you don't use panels. No. Oh yeah, so my question is irrelevant then. Every every so often I do, and I, I haven't I haven't found anything different really. Um, panels for me normally has been for it if I need to give something to somebody else and um, give them modules that reproduces things when I don't know what the system is going to be put in is doing. I sometimes use panels because it pretty much ensures things will come out the same way at the other end. Um, but I, I haven't done a lot with panels for the most part. I tend to use context and things like that for the most part. So. Okay, thanks. Sir. 
ってますいや。Yeah. Okay, so the question is the biggest complaints I'm getting from the customers right now in the current setup that I'm not delivering things fast enough. <laughs> I think that's the most common complaint for everybody, most likely. I, I haven't had any.、Um, people tend to get on with it after I kind of show them the intro stuff.、Um, it's, it's not rocket science to have an admin menu, and, you know, so basically, in, let's go back to this is a more up to date. Version using admin menu source instead of, well, this was using QuickBar, just so you know. This was a module called QuickBar that I've since stopped using because admin menu source and admin menu is a better experience for me. But once I've started doing this, I haven't had that many issues. If anything, it's been more just kind of Drupal complaints or something.、Um, like, for instance, there was a complaint on this site that when, that when people were adding products to upload the files, That they kept going to, because to, this site is selling downloads, that they kept going to the files menu, and I kept just having to explain the that's there for after the fact, or just putting files into the system. If you have to add a product to、uh, a download to sell, you have to use that file field. I guess that's more of a just kind of an un understanding thing than anything else, but I haven't had any major complaints. If anybody has any major complaints about this, bring those up as well. I'd, I'd like to know、um, after seeing this. Okay so, the, okay, so the clients want to put money into the front end of the site and not the back end.、Um, I don't, clients don't know that I'm doing this. I just do it. This, and people, people have asked me in the past, how, many, how much percentage of a project has this taken you to do? I say, I don't know, a day? And if, 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 you're, if you're working on a project that's two or three months long or whatever, you know, a, a day in total, I mean, all these views and things.、Um, Don't take very long to build. You can have one and then just clone them and modify it. And if you're using the Tasty, and now the Tasty backend install profile is there, I've been using that on some new sites I've been doing. It just happens.、Um, for anything, for the, for it, it'll give you basics. The Tasty backend profile will give you a basic views bulk operation view for each content type you have. It's up to you to then customize it, but all the hard work is already there. If you have a base view for everything, so then all you have to do is say, okay, well, we have images, add an image field. That's going to take Five minutes, five, ten minutes. So, in, in, in the end,、um, clients haven't really had any issue with it. They've just never really known. They just kind of think this is the way things get put together.、Um, if anything, when I've gone into sites I didn't build and then have done this type of thing, then they go, oh, wow, that's so much easier.、Um, so, I think in the end,、um, they don't know it's there. It doesn't take a lot of time. So, there's no real necessity to. Have it as a line item or anything else on the, on the project or charge extra for it or anything along those lines. For me, it's just a standard way of doing things. So if, if I'm going to quote something for a project, you know, a price is going to be in there already. So they don't know. Anyone else? Yes. Well, no, I mean, seven theme. Okay, so the question is about responsive forms in, in I guess, in Drupal 7, really,、uh, in particular vertical tabs.、Um, they don't work. <laughs> If you're using seven theme, and I usually do in Drupal 7, they don't collapse or anything. Drupal 8, they collapse to field sets, which is great, or an accordion thing. So that is a very nice,、um, like, that's brilliant. When I saw that, I was so happy about it. Um, so that's a brilliant experience on mobile. So in Drupal 8, there's going to be a much better admin experience for people on mobiles or tablets anyway. So in 7, in the meantime,、um, this doesn't do it. There, there, there may be, I, I subscribed to a thread about that. And there may be some code that gets backported or something, or you could write your own module or something.、Um, uh, there could be admin themes out there that are helping to better use、um, or in. Better the experience for admins on mobiles as well. I don't know at the moment.、Um, I haven't had any, anybody ever ask about managing、um, their content on a mobile. 
Um, I think all of my clients do this stuff while they're at work, and then when they go home or if they're out and about, they don't touch it. So um, it's, you know, and it, I, I do think that mobile-friendly admin stuff is a very good thing to have. Um, so, but I think seven at the moment is just not up to it. Anyone else? Any other questions? Uh, please provide feedback. Um, that's the note ID for the Amsterdam site on this. And since I have a captive audience, I have to put up all, all my contact info. I am a freelancer. Hire me. Um, and thank you very much for coming. I've got to say, uh, just a, a quick note. I, I mentioned earlier about jobs and stuff like that. And uh, six years ago, I lost a job. I was really kind of getting started in Drupal. And six years later, here I am presenting at DrupalCon. This is the best effing community on earth. Thank you so much.